Hey, Pin Dude here. Welcome back to my vintage pinball. Today's episode is pinball restoration update. Uh, let's see, what game are we working on? Uh, 1979 Gottlieb Countdown, part number two. Uh, so this is the Gottlieb Countdown that we bought a few weeks ago on uh, Pinside. Uh, it is a minor restoration that we're doing. In part number one, we got the cabinet uh, completely stripped, completely, completely cleaned, buffed, all shined up. Cabinet looks great. Uh, so in this episode, we are going to get the cabinet repopulated with all of its nicely shiny restored parts. Uh, all the metal parts have gone through ultrasonic cleaning, tumbling. Uh, the bigger parts have gone through uh, evapor rust, uh, rust remover, uh, some hand buffing, and uh, all kinds of stuff that we've done to the parts. I'll show that in this video and we will get it all bolted into this cabinet. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll get the game inside the, uh, the new game room. Uh, if you saw my last uh, video, which was the game room update, I now have a fully dedicated game room space that fits five pinball machines uh, that we've determined five pinball machines is the max. I still feel like I can squeak maybe one more in there, but we'll see uh, as time goes on. Uh, and then also the new uh, sit-in room, which is uh, right adjacent, actually in the same room as the game room with the wall dividers that split the two rooms. Uh, so if, if you didn't see that episode, check that out. It's the uh, episode before this one, Game Room Update. It's only like 14 minutes long or something. Uh, so hopefully we'll get this cabinet into the game room so we can get the head out here and start working on that. Uh, it's really going to depend on the coin door at this point because I have not started on the coin door yet. Um... The outside of the coin door is in nice shape. The guy did try to clean it up and buff it up. Uh, but the parts, everything on the inside needs to be gone through and ultrasonic and tumbled and all that. And I haven't even started on that yet. So uh, we'll see how much we can get done and uh, see where uh, we end up in this episode. But uh, it's going to be a jam-packed episode. So I hope you enjoy it and hope you learn something about uh, restoring your pinball machine. Um, this is a real typical, you know, you just bought a pinball machine, you just want to clean it up, uh, you don't want to do a full restore on it, we're not doing a full restore on this Gottlieb Countdown, uh, we're just doing stuff that anybody can do, you don't need a, a whole lot of specialty tools for this, uh, so th this is a real fun restore, uh, we're not doing any play field clear code in it or anything like that, so I, I think this will be a real enjoyable series, uh, this is part number two. We're going to get started right now, bolting stuff into this cabinet that's sitting right next to me. So let's get going. All right, so now that we got the cabinet all done and ready to put back together, I'm going through all the stuff in the cabinet and cleaning it up. And uh, I've already tumbled most of the hardware, ultrasonic, a bunch of stuff. So now I'm working on the last bits, which are the bigger uh, bits that we need to work on. So here's the power board. I removed all the electronics from the power board. Um, I basically just unbolted everything and then slid it onto this towel. And I just went through with uh, some Mean Green uh, toothbrush and then a blow gun to blow off the Mean Green and cleaned all the wiring and all the components here. I didn't go hog wild crazy on this. I just want to get all the, um, you know, the wiring nice and clean and all the gunk off so that when you touch stuff, you don't get all black dust on your hands. So we got that all nice and clean. And you can see the main reason I wanted to do this, and I'll have a close-up of this in a second, is this power board is really dirty, and it's actually got like some moldy-looking stuff on it. So we need to clean this up. Uh, so now that I got this all, I got all the wiring cleaned. I blew it off the best I could. We're just going to let it sit here to finish up air drying while we work on this board. So let's go to the workbench, and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to end up doing to this board. All right, so we got the power board on the bench here. You can see uh, the outlines of where everything is. And uh, it's like, I, I believe it is actually mold. I think it's black mold. Uh, so we're gonna sand that off. Obviously we have these labels that we wanna save. So what I did is I took a digital picture of this. So I make sure I get the labels back in the right place. And I'm gonna carefully pull the staples with my little tack uh, puller. Uh, and then we'll restaple these in when we're done. So we're going to pull off all these labels. We're going to take this outside and sand it with the orbital sander with probably 220 and 3, 320 sandpaper. And then we'll uh, staple these labels back on. 
bolt everything back onto the board and then we got to do one slight modification which is a uh, system one upgrade that we need to do to the small transformer and i'll go through that once we get the power board back together all right so that looks a lot better that was uh five minutes with my power sander with 220 and then i just went over it real quick by hand with 320 to kind of chamfer the edges because they were really rough uh so you won't get any splinters and it looks real nice so now i'm working on putting the labels back on i'm just using my uh air stapler i have the uh pressure set to like 35 psi which is like the lowest it'll actually fire a staple so i don't staple right through the label and I'm just using the original labels. I clean them real carefully with just glass cleaner on a blue shop rag. They're not perfect, but at least they're clean and they look good. Uh, I could have reproduced these, but, you know, I don't feel the need to go that far with this game. So uh, I took pictures, and I have those pictures up on my TV there, just to make sure I get the orientation right on the labels and get them back in the right place. So I'm just going to get them back where they were. You can, you can see where the staple holes were. So it's easy to line up the label where it was. And then I look at my picture for reference. Get it as straight as we can. And then we'll just go in here and staple it down the way it was. And it's got one more left to do here. And there we go, we got a real nice looking power board. And it took uh, all of about 10 or 15 minutes to get to this point. And now we'll move back to the floor and slide everything back on and get everything bolted together. All right, so now we're just going to reverse the way I took this apart. We're just gonna slide everything back onto the, pa uh, the power board here, carefully. All right, so we got everything somewhat in position. Now all the hardware I went through in uh, ultrasonic and tumbled all the hardware in corn with polish. So they're all looking nice and shiny. So they're gonna look real good. And then all the little wire loom plastic brackets, they went through the ultrasonic. So uh, let me get this bolted up and uh, it's gonna look pretty good. I'll show it to you in the end. All right, so here's the power board. Looks real nice. The wood looks good. All the screws are nice. All the wiring's clean. I went through all these fuses and checked them for if the fuse was good, obviously, and also for its value. And a couple were the wrong value, so I put the correct ones in. So now we need to do the modification to protect this small transformer. Now the thing is, these transformers in the design that Gottlieb did for System 1s, uh, this transformer can get damaged uh, fairly easily, and this transformer is impossible to find. So if you end up smoking this small transformer, uh, you're going to have a hard time finding one, and it's going to be really expensive. So there is a mod to add two fuses to this small transformer to protect it. So uh, go to pinrepair.com, which is Clay's site. I use it for everything. Go to the System 1 section, and then in the Table of Contents, look at uh, protecting the small transformer, and he'll go through how to do that. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, you just need a couple things. You need two of uh, these small inline fuse holders. I get these from uh, Great Plains Electronics. Um, and then you just need uh, some hookup wire to hook this up. Uh, so to start, uh, we're going to start with Terminal 6, if you look in the instructions. Terminal 6 uh, on my game and most system ones is a yellow, black, black, white wire. Uh, on mine, the, the yellow wire is really, the yellow on the wire is almost non-existent. Uh, it's hard to see it. It's all faded. Uh, but it is there, so I'm going to unsolder that from the uh, small transformer. Again, that's uh, Terminal 6. The numbers are on the paper label. Uh, and it's the one on the right, second one down. So we're going to unsolder that wire. <clears throat> I 
All right, so we're going to be taking that wire and soldering it to one end of the fuse holder. So we need to mount the fuse holder somewhere where the wire can reach it. And to screw that down, we're just going to use a, uh, a little uh, number six screw. So I need to get a screw. And then we're going to solder one wire to the inline fuse holder. And then I'm just going to use a piece of hookup wire to hook the other end of the fuse holder back up to the number six lug on the small transformer. And then we will uh, do the other, uh, the other terminal that we need to do. All right, so we got the first one hooked up. Uh, once again, took the uh, yellow, black, black striped wire off of lug number six. And we took that wire and soldered it to one side of the inline fuse holder. We used a piece of hookup wire, soldered it to the other side of the inline fuse holder, and then soldered it back to lug number six on the small transformer. I used a little number six uh, wood screw and screwed the uh, inline fuse box to the power board. So that side's all set. So now we need to do the other one to protect this small transformer. So we're gonna take the yellow red striped wire off of lug number seven. You can see now that I'm zoomed in that these uh, lugs are numbered on this little paper sleeve over the uh, small transformer. We've got 4, 6, 13, 14. So those are the numbers we're looking at. So we just did 6. Now we're going to 7. We're going to unsolder that one. And we're going to mount a, another inline fuse holder right here on the uh, power board. We'll solder that wire to one side. Use another hookup wire from this side of the inline uh, fuse holder. And solder that on lug 7. And then we'll be just about done. So let me uh, solder that up real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, I got that other fuse holder installed here. Uh, once again, lug sevens. Uh, took that off lug seven, this yellow red wire. Got that on this side of the inline filter. Used the jumper wire to tie this side back. Soldered it to lug seven. Screwed it down with a number six wood screw. And now we have both of them in. So now you need two uh, one amp slow blow fuses, one amp slow blow. And we're gonna put those into the inline fuse holders. And now our small transformer is protected from ever blowing up. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use a uh, Sharpie. I could, I could print a label out for this, but I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and uh, write one one amp slow blow next to this fuse holder so that the next person that gets this game uh, knows what fuse goes in there in case it ever blows. And now the power board is done. So it uh, came out real good. We got the added modification to the game and this is ready to go back into the cabinet. Uh, but we have one thing we need to do to the cabinet first before this goes in. So let's uh, roll the cabinet out into the middle of the garage and we'll uh, get to work. All right, so before we uh, get anything else in the cabinet, start reassembling, uh, we need to deal with the leg plates. Now, these are the uh, uh, original leg plates, you know, where the leg bolts thread into. And these are pretty much crap. Uh, you can see how bent up it is. And they were just held on with uh, two nails right here. And the threads, there's only like three threads in there. They strip out really easy. They don't hold the leg very secure. And they do nothing to help beef up the cabinet uh, in the leg area. So, uh, I went to Pinball Life and I, I put these in all my games. These are the later Bally Williams leg plates. Uh, you can see there is quite a difference. <laughs> so, this is going to go here. And then we're going to add six screws to the sides and it really strengthens up the cabinet in the leg area and for screws uh i have bought it i have a bunch of options in 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 stock uh you want to use the beefiest screw that you can get through here into the cabinet obviously without poking through the other side of the cabinet so make sure you're aware that you're using the proper length screw that gives you the most meat into the cabinet but you know is in no fear of blowing through the cabinet all right so at the same time um, i'm going to be adding my outside leg protectors um, this is the stern style also from pinball life 
Uh, these are the thin ones. There is, I think, Mantis or somebody makes a thicker one, but they're a lot more money. Um, this is already getting expensive just for leg plate stuff because these leg plates are five bucks a piece. And then these leg protectors are $15 for a set of four. Uh, so, you know, we're already investing quite a bit into this uh, leg system. But uh, this is going to protect the outside of the cabinet from getting gouged to like the previous damage over here already here uh, and it also allows you to tighten the leg more so that everything is nice and tight and secure and then with the addition of this plate on the inside it's really going to solid up the cabinet and uh, it's worth the investment so uh, I'm going to do these like I said both at the same time so I have my new leg plate here on the inside I'm going to put the bolts through this protector and into the cabinet and then thread that into the new leg plate and then we'll snug this up and kind of get everything lined up and then these leg protectors are neat they come with these little screws and pre-drilled uh, countersunk holes so you drill these into the cabinet so that when you take your legs off the protector stays here it's always on the cabinet and always ready to go so once I get this all snugged up I'll come back and we will pre-drill and get these screws in for this leg protector all right I got the leg protector kind of centered up on the holes and nicely on the corner and I got the bolt snugged up new leg plates on the inside uh, I'm just using a tiny drill bit on a drill to pre-drill to pre-drill these holes so we don't want to crack the uh, outer ply on the cabinet. And then the, uh, the leg protectors come with these little screws. So we're just going to screw these in. And I'll do the same on this one and then we're all set and the leg protectors stay with the cabinet and they do a good job. Also, I bought new leg bolts. The, um, the new leg bolts that you can get, the uh, Williams Valley ones, I guess they are, they're a little bit longer than the factory ones. So they give you a little more meat through the new leg protector. So uh, these are pretty cheap. And uh, the old, old leg bolts are always all beat up. So it's worth uh, replacing them. So let me get the other screw in here and then we'll go back into the cabinet and secure the uh, the inner leg plate. All right, so now we're inside the cabinet. I picked a screw that is the appropriate size. It's not gonna go through the uh, cabinet. It's a number eight by half inch screw in my case. Uh, I'm gonna pre-drill the holes and screw them in. So we just gotta go along and I wanna pre-drill the hole so nothing splits. And then just take our wood screw and screw it in. And I, I won't tighten them all. Uh, I won't tighten them all until the end, so everything kind of centers itself. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, so I'm going to finish this plate. Do the other three plates, uh, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll start reassembling the rest of the cabinet. All right, so now that we got all the uh, corner protectors in and the leg plates all set up, ready to go, uh, I got the bottom plate back on the cabinet. That was a pain in the neck. If you remember when I tore it off, it was all bent up. Did the best I could. Uh, got that cleaned up and on. So now we're going to put the power board in. So it's a little heavy and awkward to deal with here. But uh, let's drop this into the cabinet and get it bolted in. All right, so we got our hardware. It's just two bolts that hold this into the game. Nice shiny hardware that went through the tumbler. And we'll tighten those bolts up and we will continue to repopulate the inside of the cabinet. 
All right, so on the back of the cabinet here, now that we have it looking uh, much better than it did before, we need to get the uh, slides, the uh, little white glides back on the cabinet. They're little tack glides. Um, I got them, I buy these in bulk. I got these off eBay. They're uh, three quarters inch in diameter and they're just white cabinet glides. You can buy these from the pinball places too, but this is like a box of, yeah, this is a box of 100 and it was like seven bucks or something. Uh, so I pretty much have a, for me, a lifetime supply of these. Now, uh, a lot of times, unless you go in and, and fill the holes like with a bamboo stick or toothpicks, uh, you're not going to be able to use the original hole. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. And to pound these in, I use a little uh, rubber mallet and I wrap it with blue, blue tape so it protects the cabinet uh, glide from getting uh, marred. And then we'll just pound these in and the cabinet will be protected from ever getting all hacked up like this uh, because of this glide being missing when I bought the game. All right, so I had some pretty rusty stuff in this game. Some of the uh, zinc uh, coated stuff and this uh, chrome bar that goes across the uh, back of the cabinet. Uh, and I've actually never used Evaporust before. Uh, I don't know how I got by this far without using it. I've been watching the thread on Pinside for Evaporust for a long time now. But I finally decided to buy some and uh, I did these pieces and they came out fantastic. Uh, so I am definitely a believer in Evaporust. I uh, should have been a believer in it long ago. I think in the past I used to like try to sand off the rust and then buff the pieces. Uh, but this worked so much better. Um, I meant to film when I was getting this uh, all set up in the Evaporust and I don't know, I forgot. Uh, so I'll throw, I'll throw a before picture up right now of this receiver. And uh, it had a lot of rust, especially across the top. This, this was complete rust. Uh, so with, uh, if you've never used the Vaporust, uh, you just soak it in this uh, solution for like 12 to 24 hours or whatever. And you take it out and it comes and then you rinse it off with water. And then I blew it all off with my blowgun. And... Uh, so all the rust is gone, but, you know, obviously the rust damaged the finish of the metal. So you can see pits and all this other stuff. But we're going to hand rub this with uh, the Magan Aluminum Polish, which will do two things. It'll shine it back up, it'll even out the finish some, and it'll help protect it from rusting again. And then we'll throw some wax on it and buff it up, and these parts will look real good. So uh, the tough thing with Evaporust is finding a container to put the Evaporust in to soak your parts in. Um, obviously, I only bought a gallon of this because it's kind of expensive. It was like uh, $19 for this gallon. So I didn't want to buy more than a gallon. So what I ended up using, I tried a bunch of different stuff, nothing worked. <clears throat> this is just a lid from uh, like a big Tupperware container, like a storage bin, just a plastic lid. And it holds a gallon. A gallon of this comes up right about to the top level here. And that was enough to soak all these parts. Now, the receiver wasn't fully covered. So I, I soaked it for uh, like 8 to 10 hours. And then I went in and flipped it for another 8 to 12 hours. And it came out this good. Now, the other problem with this is you need to cover the container that you have the evaporust in otherwise it'll evaporate and you'll lose a lot of it so all i did for that is uh after i had the evaporust in here put all my parts in i just took a, a garbage trash bag and i put the whole container into the trash bag and sealed the end uh, and it worked out real good so now i have a good solution for soaking my uh, bigger parts uh, in Evaporust. For smaller parts, uh, simple enough, just use a, uh, you know, like a kitchen Tupperware container uh, that will fit your parts. Put some Evaporust in there so the part is completely submerged. Let it sit for 12 hours and you're all set. So, love an Evaporust. Can't believe I've gone this many years uh, doing pinball stuff without it. Uh, but, so that's all done. <clears throat>
Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, this stuff is reusable. So uh, after I got my parts out of this bin that was had a gallon of Evaporust in it, I used a uh, funnel on, on the top here. And in the funnel, I used a automotive paint strainer. Uh, but you can also use a coffee filter. Put that in the funnel and then pour the dirty Evaporust through it. That'll catch all the rust uh, particles and everything that's in the Evaporust and you'll get a good reusable evaporust in here. And this is reusable over and over again. Uh, it, the potency of it will go down in time over use, uh, but it is, you know, reusable many times. Uh, so I just wanted to add that. All right, so let's uh, bolt some more stuff in the cabinet now. All right, so I've been working on uh, repopulating the inside of the cabinet here. I uh, got a bunch of the bright work back in. And you can see the importance of uh, taking all this bright work off and uh, working on shining it up. Uh, it really makes a big difference, makes the inside of the cabinet really pop. Uh, and if you remember from the before pictures, all this bright work was heavily uh, rusted and corroded. <music> So I use the Evaporust that you saw me use on all these bigger parts that don't fit in the tumbler. The Evaporust did an amazing job. Um, and then after I cleaned it and rinsed it after the Evaporust, I rubbed everything down with Mother's uh, Mag and Aluminum Polish on a microfiber cloth. And then I waxed all these parts so that they will not corrode again. And being in a temperature controlled environment, they're not, they're not going to rust again. Um, you can still see all the little pits and everything, all the damage that was done by the rust on these uh, zinc coated parts. You can still see pitting and stuff, but you know, they look real good. They're shiny and uh, you know, everything's coming out real good. Uh, so we don't have a lot left to do other than the coin door. The coin door is the big thing we got left to do, uh, but I'll take you for a little spin around here. We got the, uh, the sound tone boards back in the knocker has been uh, knocker has been taken apart and clean new coil sleeve. Uh, the switches are back in. I did end up getting new switch housings and switch buttons from Pinball Resource. I was going to reuse the old ones. I put the old ones through the ultrasonic cleaner, uh, but these were cheap. Uh, you know, a buck or so from Pinball Resource, so I decided to get new ones. Power switch is now there at the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, the speaker is the original speaker. I just cleaned it up with some magnet aluminum polish uh, and some mean green. Uh, so that looks real good. And then on this side, we got uh, the tilt panel started to put back together. We got the roll tilt. All this uh, has been cleaned up. Uh, this, the main part here went through evapor rust and then magnet aluminum polish. The ball is the original ball, uh, went to the tumbler. The switch for the roll tilt has been cleaned. Um, and the rest of this panel we can't populate until we get the coin door wiring harness in because the coin door wiring harness runs along there and plugs in right here. Uh, again, new switch uh, plastics on this side. And then the trim on the, uh, the trim on the back here was in particularly bad condition. Uh, there was all rust on the top here. So that went through evapor rust and it came out pretty good. You know, there's still some, uh, you can see where the zinc plate in has been damaged. Uh, but it's nice and shiny now and it's more than acceptable. Uh, this trim piece here is stainless steel. So of course that cleaned up real nice. So uh, we just have a couple things left to do. And right now we're going to start on one of the last pieces that needs to be bolted to the cabinet other than the coin door. Uh, which is the shooter rod here. Uh, so let's go to the workbench and we'll work on the uh, shooter assembly. All right, so for the uh, shooter rod assembly, we kind of have a mix of some new stuff and some old stuff. Uh, so from Pinball Resource, I got a new shooter, uh, new shooter rod sleeve. Uh, this is the part, the actual nylon part that the uh, shooter rod goes through. The old one had a lot of play in it. Uh, so there's no point in reusing this. It's really cheap. 
Uh, so we got a new one of those. This is the uh, little uh, washer that goes on the end of the shooter spring. The old one was all munged up, it was in real bad shape. Uh, again, that's like a quarter part or something. We got a new shooter spring and the outer barrel spring. So those are all new parts and all these, uh, you know, are probably add up to a couple dollars. So no point in uh, not replacing all that stuff. Now these two parts you can replace. This is the uh, shooter outer housing. This is the housing that you see bolted to the outside of the cabinet. Uh, you can get a new one of these for like $8.50. Uh, but, you know, once you start getting into parts that are like $10 a piece, the, you know, the, uh, the money adds up really quick. Uh, and I don't want to put that much money into this game. So we're going to reuse the old one. Uh, so you can already see this looks pretty good. This was all rusted and pitted. Uh, you can still see where all the pitting was on the inside. So I put this in the evapor rust, and it made it look come out really good. Uh, after the evapor rust, and uh, after I rinsed all the evapor rust off, this went th into the tumbler with uh, corn cob media and the uh, couple drops of magan aluminum polish, and this is how it came out of the tumbler, and it looks real good. Yes, there's a little bit of pitting in it, uh, but it's good. It's shiny. Uh, the last step we're going to do is take this over to the buffer and clean that up. We're going to do that in just a second. So there's no point in replacing a part if you don't need to, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, I always, always, always try to reuse as many parts as I can uh, when it comes to parts that are just uh, visual. You know, if it's a part that interacts with the ball, uh, I will obviously replace the part if it's going to make the gameplay better. Uh, but cosmetic stuff, I try to do the best I can with what I have. Uh, and here's another example of, it, of that. This is the shooter rod. Uh, again, you can buy a new one of these. It's probably eight, nine bucks, something like that. Uh, so, so far this one has gone through the tumbler uh, with, uh, well, first it went through a tumbler with walnut shells to knock any corrosion or any, you know, really bad spots off. And then it went through the uh, corn cob media with the Mother's Magnet Aluminum Polish. And this is how it came out of the tumbler. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Uh, the last step is going to be to take this over to the buffer with, with this piece and buff it uh, to try to get the, uh, the end here a little better. Uh, the bigger problem is uh, the end was all mushroomed. And somebody ground it down. They actually ground it down to a point. It's actually kind of a sharp point on here. So I'm just going to take this over to my bench grinder, kind of flatten that out a little bit. And then we'll uh, polish these up. And then we'll be able to reassemble all this stuff and get it bolted to the cabinet. So uh, let's go over to the uh, bench grinder and the buffer and uh, get these parts shined up. All right, so first I'm going to deal with the, uh, the tip here that's got that sharp point on it. I don't want that because then that sharp point could actually end up going through the little rubber shooter tip. So we don't want that. So I'm just going to take it to my bench grinder with the stone here and flatten that out a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good now. So now I'm just going to use my loose uh, flap wheel on my buffer here. We don't need to use the firm one because these have already gone through the tumbler and they're already real good. We just want to get them a little better. Uh, so you're going to need rouge, obviously. Uh, I tend to just use white. Uh, there's different grades of rouge. Um, this is the white that actually says, uh, for shine into high gloss finish, hard metals, soft metals, nickel, chrome, and plastics. Uh, I always find the white works really good. So I'm just going to turn my buffer on, get some rouge on the wheel there, and then we got this shooter housing here. And we're just going to work on buffing that up. And it, it makes a pretty big difference. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of, uh, doesn't take a lot of buffing here to get this looking good. Alright, so now that we got the uh, shooter housing done, uh, we want to work on the knob here. Uh, it came out pretty good in the tumbler, but uh, it can definitely get a little shinier. And this buffer will do that. Alright, so we got these parts that we just buffed all cleaned up. And I put a little, uh, just, you know, liquid uh, carnauba wax on them. 
I just find that makes it easier to uh, get a nice even finish on them and it helps resist uh, fingerprints. Uh, so you can see they came out really good. The end of the uh, shooter knob there looks really nice. So we're all ready to put this uh, together. I got all the parts here. And uh, in case you don't remember how things go together, I am using uh, on the pinball, pinball resource site, he has a little breakdown of uh, you know how this gets assembled. So I'm just going to use that to assemble this. And uh, we'll go over to the cabinet and get this all bolted on. Yes, yeah, so I got all my shooter, shooter parts assembled here. And I'm just going to try to get this all together. All right, so we got the shooter assembly all done. Not going to worry about tightening it down too much. This is adjustable. Uh, so once we get the play field back in the position, we'll line this shooter assembly up with the ball. Uh, but it came out real good. Looks real shiny. Uh, so pretty much everything inside the cabinet is now done. Uh, so we got to start working on that coin door. So let's go get the coin door and uh, start taking a look at it. All right, so we got the coin door out here. Uh, you can see it's... Uh, Got a lot of scratches, dirty, uh, needs a lot of work here. Uh, the guy I bought it from cleaned it up a little bit, put a new sticker on, but there's all kinds of gunk under the sticker. So I did buy a new sticker. Uh, oddly enough, this sticker is $4.50 uh, from the pinball resource. Uh, so not cheap, but unfortunately, we're going to have to peel this off because it's all crusty underneath and we need to regrain this. So we did order that. Uh, the inside is pretty grungy. Uh, we can get all this cleaned up pretty good, uh, but we need to disassemble it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. So first, I'm just going to take very detailed digital pictures of all of this uh, because there is, as you'll see as I take it apart, there is a lot of pieces here. Uh, redoing a coin door is pretty involved. There's a lot of parts. There's a lot of screws. Um, it's very easy to lose track uh, when you go to put it together. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where pieces go. So I'm going to take a ton of pictures of this uh, and then we'll come back and we'll tear this all apart uh, so that we can start uh, ultrasonic cleaning stuff, uh, tumbling stuff, and uh, all the other stuff that we're going to need to do to get this coin door looking nice and sharp again. So uh, let me uh, take some pictures and I'll be right back. All right, so I just took a ton of pictures and now we're all set to start tearing this down. So I'm just gonna get at it and start taking uh, a bazillion screws out and organizing all my parts and uh, see what we end up with. Wow, there is a lot of pieces to this coin door. Uh, this is going to take quite a while to get this all cleaned up. Uh, luckily, nothing's in severely bad shape. It's just a little rusty here or there and uh, very dirty. As you can see, my hands are kind of blackish. Uh, so we need to uh, ultrasonic a lot of this stuff and tumble a lot of this stuff. And we need to work on uh, regraining the coin door and stuff like that. Uh, but that's all going to be next time. Uh, I think we have enough. We've done enough in this video. We got a lot done. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to start to uh, <coughs> kind of bag all this stuff up so I can work on it uh, throughout the week. And uh, let's uh, wrap this video up. All right, so that'll do it for part number two of the pinball restoration update on the 1979 Gottlieb countdown. We got quite a lot done. I was hoping to get the cabinet inside uh, this week so I could start working on the head. But once I started to look at that coin door, uh, I knew I just wasn't going to, uh, my OCD wasn't going to accept the fact that I don't take it all apart and clean it. So I had to take it all apart and we're going to have to go through the whole thing and shine everything up. And it'll look real good in the end, but, you know, it's going to take a few days. Uh, but the rest of the cabinet's done, so we did get a lot done this week. So I'm real happy with the progress. 
and it you know it just looks phenomenal so far uh, and this was uh, about one week's wor worth of work working a couple hours at a time uh, so not a lot of time spent uh, but you know makes a huge difference uh, compared to what the game looked like when we bought it so i hope you enjoyed the episode um, we will get working on part number three hopefully for next week uh, we'll see how this uh, coin door goes uh, you saw how many parts there are, so quite a lot of parts to go through. And then, of course, uh, trying to figure out how the heck to reassemble the thing. Good thing I have a lot of pictures. Uh, so, I will see you next time. I want to thank you for watching My Vintage Pinball. Uh, check me out on Facebook, uh, My Vintage Pinball, starring Pin Dude. If you have any questions, comments, you would like me to read on the air, send me an email at fierodug at gmail.com. Uh, so that'll be it. I am Pin Dude. This is my vintage pinball, and I will see you next time.